March 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 16 from the New Testament. Jesus also said to the disciples, There was a rich man who was informed of accusations that his manager was wasting his assets. So he called the manager in and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Turn in the account of your administration, because you can no longer be my manager. Then the manager said to himself, What should I do, since my master is taking my position away from me? Not strong enough to dig, and I'm too ashamed to beg. I know what to do so that when I'm put out of management, people will welcome me into their homes. So he contacted his master's debtors one by one. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? The man replied, A hundred measures of olive oil. The manager said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? The second man replied, A hundred measures of wheat. The manager said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager because he acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their contemporaries than the people of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by how you use worldly wealth, so that when it runs out, you will be welcomed into the eternal homes. The one who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and the one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you haven't been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will entrust you with the true riches? And if you haven't been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees, who loved money, heard all this and ridiculed him. But Jesus said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in men's eyes, but God knows your hearts. For what is highly prized among men is utterly detestable in God's sight. The law and the prophets were in force until John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God has been proclaimed, and everyone is urged to enter it. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tiny stroke of a letter in the law to become void. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery, and the one who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. There was a rich man who dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. But at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus whose body was covered with sores, who longed to eat what fell from the rich man's table. In addition, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, as he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far off with Lazarus at his side. So he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in anguish in this fire. But Abraham said, Child, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus likewise bad things, but now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. Besides all this, a great chasm has been fixed between us, so that those who want to cross over from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. So the rich man said, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers, to warn them so that they don't come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. They must respond to them. Then the rich man said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He replied to him, If they do not respond to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. God, when I die at my memorial service, what I want more than anything else is there for not to be a single person who attends that doesn't know about you. I want to be able to tell everybody I come in contact with about you. To tell them stories about you, to tell them my testimony about the life that you gave me. 
and the new heart that you gave me. To tell them about your son and what he did for them as well. I don't want there to be a single person at my memorial service who's, who's able to say, I didn't know. I didn't know about this God that all of the rest of you are talking about. I didn't know about Jesus. I guess Janelle never loved me enough to tell me about all these incredible things. And God, I definitely don't want somebody ending up in hell. And them saying, but nobody ever told me about God. Now, that's not true in the United States. <laughs> you just have to open your eyes and you know about you. Um, but today, God, I just ask that we go out and you put people in our lives who we are given opportunities to talk about you, to talk about your love, to talk about your mercy, to talk about ah, just how amazing you are and how amazing your son is and what you do in our lives. I just get so excited when I get to talk to other people about you. You know, it's so interesting in the story with Abraham talking to the rich man. But your brothers, your family, they've already been told about God by Moses and the prophets. And yet they still choose to not listen. They still choose to not hear. So God, besides praying for to put people in our lives today, in our path that we're walking today, so that we can talk to them about you. God, I just pray for their hearts that they'll be open uh, to hearing about you, open to uh, changing their lives, open to accepting Jesus into their life. I just hope that they are open and that their hearts are open to what you have to say before it gets to the point of the rich man and who's in hell and has no choice at that point. God, I just get so excited at watching you change people's lives and change people's hearts. And I just ask for that today. I'm really excited to hear the stories of what's going to happen today and just how powerful you are going to be in everyone's testimony today. You were just truly amazing, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen.